Hi everyone, this is Mansan, and today we're going to be going over how to create something like this. So this is a head-up display that kind of utilizes the Iron Man style and could be useful for something like drawing attention to particular objects in your animation scene. So making something like this is pretty easy in After Effects and we'll just be doing that right now and let's get started. So let's create a new project and a new composition. So make sure your pixel height and width is what you want, frame rate, and the time duration I'm going to have 30 seconds. And as you remember, there is a grid in the background, so let's just start off by making a new solid. And in effects and presets, let's put grid. From here, we want to change the height and width of our grid. So we need to change from corner point to width and height slider so that they appear. Now we can change it. So 50, 50, and let's make the border height too. Something like that. That's great. Let's rename this to grid and duplicate it. Let's rename this to grid mat because we're going to be applying a mat to this, a track mat which I will show you in a second. From here, we want to invert our grid so that all the black is white and all the white is black. Let's change our width to 100, our height to 100, just to give some variation, and our border to 20. We're almost there. So from here, we're going to change our track mat to Luma Inverted Mat. So if you don't see your track mat option here, just make sure that you toggle, we can toggle on and off that menu. So let's pre-compose this and name it grid. Good. So from here, let's make our target sign. So Let's select a shape, rectangle tool, something like this. And from here, you want to turn off the stroke. And within rectangle path, you want to change the size. So let's make this around 500. Oops. Actually, let's make it 600. And we want to unlink this. And let's make this two pixels high. Cool. So now we have our horizontal target. Let's make sure that our anchor point is centered. So I'm using this move anchor point um, tap, like feature here, which I which is a free download. I'm provided the link and it's very useful for when you're doing animations in After Effects. So I really encourage you to download this and install it. From here, let's just make sure it's aligned in the center, vertical line, horizontal align, and let's rename this layer. Horizontal. Let's duplicate this. Command D, R to bring up rotation. Now we want a vertical line. So let's type in 90 degrees. And there you go. Let's rename this to vertical. And let's pre-compose these two just to keep ourselves organized. Oops. target. Awesome. So there is our target and it's a little hard to see now because we don't have a circular grid. 
So from here, I'm going to select my grid layer and make choose my ellipse. So before when we chose our rectangle, we didn't have any layer selected and that made a shape layer. If you select a layer and then choose a shape, that'll create a mask. So let's hold down shift to create a perfect circle. That. Let's move the anchor point center. And let's just move this mask over. Oops. So that it is aligned in the center. Mm. Something like that. Oops. Sorry. Let's go back. We want this to still stay in the center. Bear with me. Let's try shift. There. Like that. And we want to feather out the mask. Let's do 250 pixels. And that looks a little bit better. There, something like that. Now that we have our target, let's make the circular outline. So again, let's choose a shape, the ellipse tool, hold down shift to make a perfect circle. And let's make sure the anchor point's in the center. Vertical align, horizontal align. And from here, we don't want to fill, it's just a stroke. And I'm, I'm kind of happy with the stroke width at being one. We can increase. We can add dashes to the outline. So you, as you can see, here are some dashes. Or if you don't like that, you can keep it off. I'm gonna take it off. And from here, let's rename it again. Oops. Let's rename it. Outline. Let's duplicate the shape layer, Command D. And from here, Contents, ellipse, stroke. Let's increase our stroke width. So let's make it 40. That looks good. And to make some interesting dashes, let's from here add a plus line. So every time you add a plus line, it'll add a dash, a gap, a dash. And if you want to reduce it, you can take it out with the minus sign. So you're not really seeing anything different, but let's change our from here, our dash size. So I wanna increase this until I get about three. I'm gonna add a gap and I'm going to add another dash so you get something like this. So that's kind of interesting looking. That's good. From here, let's start trying to animate this. So let's press R. So let's keyframe this. And I'm just pressing the plus sign to be able to see my timeline a little bit better. At one second, or you can type in one here. Oops.
One second here. Let's have one rotation. So now you'll see it's rotating once. One second. Maybe that's a little too fast. Let's make it to seven seconds. So you get something like that. Actually, let's make it every 25 seconds. Let's make it even slower. And just tweak around with it to your liking. So from here, if I wanted to make it seamlessly go on, I can write an expression. So press Option and click on the stopwatch to bring up the expression. Type loop out with a capital bracket cycle semicolon. And this will make it go on past your last keyframe. Which is good. You can always tweak the speed of it if you want to as well. Uh, let's make this a little bit more interesting and let's do a kind of a pulsing of the opacity. So let's bring up T. Zero frames, let's have 100% opacity at one second. So let's just change it here. One second, let's have the opacity at uh, 60%. And then at two seconds, let's bring it up back up to 100%. So then it's something like this. To make this go on and loop, again, oops, sorry, undo, option, opacity. Oh, I just undid everything. Sorry, that's not what I wanted. Undo. So let's do that again. From here, opacity is 100 at one second, approximately one second. Let's make it 60%. And then at two seconds, two seconds, let's make it 100% again. So from here, let's change our expression to loop out cycle and it will pulse like that. And the last little bit of finesse that we're going to have on our looping element is to add a glow. Stylized glow. Let's add it onto this layer and let's change the glow radius to 10 so you get more of a glow effect and I'm going to change this rename it to looping uh, circle oops circle almost done not really but from here, I kind of want a ring that'll pulse inward. So let's grab our outline again and let's duplicate it again. And let's change the width a little bit of our ellipse to five pixels, um, maybe 10 pixels. Yep, something like that. A little bit more, a little bit less, depending on what you want. And again, we're going to apply kind of the same things that we've been doing. And from here, let's do scale. 100%. And then at one second, 
that's to zero percent. So you're getting something like that. Now we want this to be continuous. So again, option, scale, whoop, out, cycle, semicolon. So now it's continuous, but I don't really like that it's such a sharp line. I want it to be a little bit fuzzy. So let's do fast, fast blur to apply it to that layer. And you don't see anything right now because the blurriness is set to zero. So let's increase this to maybe 40. Like that. And if we play it now, that's how it looks like. So that's looking a little bit better. Maybe even increase this a little bit more. Let's make this 50. Yep. That's. Rename it to pulsing circle. And the last thing we want to do is to create the triangular elements around this target. So to do that, let's create a new shape again, a rectangle. Hold down shift to make a perfect square. Let's make sure anchor point is center and let's align vertical, align horizontal again. Let's rename our layer to square. And then from here, command D, duplicate. And let's rotate this. 90, 90 degrees, no, 45 degrees, like that. And I'm going to make this invert luma, luma invertant map again. And there we go. Easy. We got ourselves some triangles. Um, that's a little big for my taste, so let's pre-compose these. Name it triangle and then we'll scale it. S, scale it a bit. Mm, and good. Cool. So from here, we're going to use a little bit more of a erratic wiggle and rotation because we kind of want a compass, like kind of like how a compass handle changes direction. So let's bring up rotation again. And we're also going to write an expression, but this expression that I'm going to use is copy and pasted from um, a website that I'm going to show you right now. And they have interesting things with looping wiggles that you can go on to read about. So motionscript.com. And if you want to read an explanation of all these, he or she gives a good um, overview right here. So I'm not going to go into that right now, but just copy and paste. I'm going to pull this down a little bit so you can see. And let's preview. So that's kind of how it looks like right now. If you want this to be slower, you can change the frequency, modify it, go back to the website, check out what each of these mean, something like that. And that's it. You got your head up display. Thank you so much for listening, and that's all.